Pray with me, please. Gracious God, as we come to your word, we just ask that you stir within us, that you open our hearts and our minds and our souls to this, your good news. Lord, I just pray that the words of my lips and the meditation of my hearts might not be for me, but might bring glory to you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Our scripture for this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, verses 14, verses 1, and then 7 through 14. Hear these words of the Lord. On one occasion... When Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When Jesus noticed how the guests chose the place of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, Give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Amen. In some respects, this is one of those texts that's pretty straightforward. To the point, Jesus didn't mix words. Yet as we hear this text, and as I meditated on this text this week, I was shocked at how hard it is to be humble. When I was running track in high school, our coach would always tell us, know you're good, but don't let anyone else know you know. Does that sound familiar? Does that kind of sound a little bit like humility in the United States? Oh yeah, humility is a virtue. It's a virtue we took from the Puritans. It's a virtue that is a part of our culture But I don't see a whole lot of humble folks running around these days. Because so often, it's about me, myself, and I. And to cover that, I always tell people, if you spend any time with with me, I'll remind you, if someone's got to love me, it might as well be me, right? You know, God did say, love God, love self, love others, right? So... On the one hand, I do need to love myself as a child of God so I can love others. But usually I love myself because I am just so darn lovable. Right? The reality, oftentimes, is our arrogance and our pride and our need to be right and our need to get our way and our need to do what we want to do, even in the name of the Lord, is more out of our insecurities than it is in our strengths. It's more out of my fear than it is out of my love and grace of God. Because if I don't get this right, I will be disgraced. And if I'm disgraced, really, who is going to love me? I mean, if you've ever met a person who's truly humble, they're incredibly secure. And their security is not in themselves. Their security is not in their own ability. Their security is not in their own mind, but it is in whose they are. 
as they continue to remember, I am not my own, but I belong body and soul and life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. But even in this short text, there are some things we have to understand because Jesus begins in our world and then moves to the kingdom of God. And in Jesus' time, everything was about honor and shame. Honor and shame. And in fact, the word humility in Greek was a despicable word. To call someone humble was to swear at them in the worst language you could think of. And the Jews weren't any better, because at Jesus' time, many of the Jews who were writing and translating the ancient text were turning words like humility into gentleness, because gentleness was respected and humility was looked down upon. In fact, the word humility meant to be crushed, to be despised, and to not be valued. So to be humble was not something people tried to do. And so for Jesus, he starts in their world. And he says, hey, you're coming to a party. And when you came to a party, there were. There, it wasn't written out who sits where, but it was understood. There was a class system. And if you were in the lower end of things, you were just glad you were invited and you made sure you went to the right place. So Jesus is really talking to those of us who expect to be invited to the party. Jesus is talking to those of us who are expected to go to the banquet of the Lord. And he's saying, don't come in so arrogant like you know everything. Don't come in being so certain that I know where my place is that the master has to come and say, I'm sorry, but, but you need to sit down there. This is for someone else. Now, for us, this sounds awful. You know, yeah, I'm going to sit down here so I can move up and be honored, right? That kind of sounds strange. But in Jesus' time, he was addressing them in their world. And in their world, he raised the issue of humility by saying, here's an example for you. In your life, the action is do this. The action is in everything you do, make yourself lower than everyone else so in that you can be blessed. And sometimes it's like dealing with a child, I guess. We don't explain to children absolutely everything and the reason behind stuff and, and what we're hoping they will learn in the process. We just say, hey, if you do this, I'll give you a cookie. Um, but in the process, they learn something, right? So Jesus is saying to them, in your world, in your world, you do this, and you will learn more and more to live the way that I am calling you to live. They were, he was asking them to practice this and to try and set aside our pride, my way or the highway, I'm right and you are wrong. When it comes to something like our faith, those places where we really want to get down and dirty and we know we're right and everyone else is wrong, are sometimes the very place where we need to slide down the table just because Jesus told us to. Like I said, that's our world. That's Jesus coming to us. But in the second half of this text, Jesus makes clear what the kingdom of God expects from us. Because he goes to the leader of this banquet who was a Pharisee. You know, the Pharisees are always set up as these bad guys. Well, some of them were his friends. And some of them were people who were interested in what he had to do and teach. Sure, there were some who were watching to catch him. But there were others that were, were on his side trying to, to embrace what he was teaching. So he takes this Pharisee aside and he says to them, Hey, don't just invite those who are like you and look like you and act like you. Why don't you invite those who we all despise? You have to understand the people that Jesus listed here the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. These people in Jesus' time 
it was believed they were that way because they have sinned. And they saw these things as punishment. And if you were being punished for sin and you weren't healed, then that made you unclean and worthless and despicable. And the last thing that I want in my house as a good Jewish, Jewish man is an unclean, despicable person. Because what would other people say? In fact, if my neighbor saw me invite these people into my house, that neighbor, not only might he not invite me to his house, he might not even associate with me because I've associated with them and now I am unclean. I mean, do you understand the radicalness of what Jesus is saying here? Jesus is saying, hey, in your world, just try to be humble. Just try to do what's right. But if you want to be in the kingdom, I'm asking you to go to the extreme. I am asking you to sit yourself and, and surround yourself with the least of these. These weren't the least of these in God's eyes. When Jesus refers to the lame and the cripple and the poor as the least of these, that's not in God's eyes because in God's kingdom, everything's flipped upside down, right? The powerful are on the bottom, the weaker are on the top. So in God's eyes, these are the ones who will be sitting up there. So when I get kicked out of my seat, they're going to put some poor homeless person who's been striving all of his life in my seat. But for the least of these, that is who we must turn I just got back from a week in Mexico. This was quite a week. We took five adults with disabilities to Mexico to work with an orphanage of people with severe disabilities. And Kathy and Hillary Holbrook were with us. So on Tuesday, our entire trip got turned upside down as a phone call came and we sent them to Michigan. But on Sunday, we got up early and we went down to Mexico, we, into Mexico, and we went to church. And there was a pastor there, and it was a Pentecostal church, and he was preaching, and he was going on and on and on. And then he started to talk to me, which always makes me uncomfortable, because I know it's not me, it's, it's not him, it's the Lord. And he pulls out this stick, and he holds this stick up from a previous sermon, and he says, this stick is a, is a stick of your sins, and that's what we compare ourselves to. This stick of I'm this sinner, this sinner, this sinner. And as we move forward, we keep comparing ourselves to the stick. Well, I'm a man of grace, and I'm not a man of guilt. I haven't felt guilt in a long time. I've made mistakes, corrected those mistakes, but I don't live by guilt, I live by grace. So I'm going, well, what does this have, what does this have to do to me? Until all of a sudden I realized what he was holding over here were all of my successes. This is what I was able to do. And then I was able to do this. And then I was able to do this. And then I was able to do this. And I want to list them off. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. And all of a sudden, I heard God saying to me, are you measuring your life based on what you've done? Or are you willing to trust me for something even greater? And I said to Pastor Steve, I said, all right, the word of the Lord is beginning. And I believe the word of the Lord is going to end at Gabriel House. So we hear a story of this individual who, who Gabriel House was named after. No speech, no interaction. He kind of walks around with his finger in his mouth. And Hillary told us a story that a couple weeks before, a group of folks had taken him to the beach and someone had walked with him for eight hours. And at the end of the eight hours, they sat down and he gave him a hug. It was the first time Hillary had ever, she's been working there for seven years, had the first time Hillary had ever seen this individual hug another person. So I'm watching him by the corner of my eye the whole time we're there. And the first, time, first day I go over and I sit next to him and I just say to him, Nino de Dio. I hope I was saying child of God, but who knows. And I just said that to him over and over and over again. And he looked at me and you know what he did? He gave me a hug. And then he stood up and he walked a little bit further and he stopped and he, he looked in my eyes 
and he waved me over. And I walked up to him and he gave me another huge hug. And it was the last time in the entire week he interacted with me. And you know what the Lord said to me? This is your future. You are called to the least of these. Because they are the most important in my kingdom. I don't know what to do with it. I have no clue what God has in mind. But I realized it's not about us that get it. It's about those that need it. And the only way we as a community are truly, truly going to live into this is if we are willing to shift from a world where we have to fake our humility to a world where we don't care what anyone else thinks. We are going to let these people into our fold and we are going to welcome them with open arms and we are going to do whatever it takes. I know people like to know what's next. What's next? How do I apply this text to my life? What do I have to do with this? And, and, and I just want to say, I wonder if we already know we're just too afraid to do it. I wonder if we already know how to treat the person who is in need. I wonder if we already know how to treat the coworker who needs grace. I'm wondering if we already know, but we're too afraid to humble ourselves and quit depending on our stick and trust God to do something great through us. This week we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the civil rights movement and of the walk on Washington. And I found this quote while I was studying from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Our goal is to create a beloved community and this will require a qualitative change in our souls as well as a quantitative change in our lives. I had to look up all those big words. I have to be willing to allow myself to change on the inside, but then you better be able to measure it on the outside. And as I look at my life, I wonder, do I show that I am not a racist by the friends I have in my life? Do I show that I'm not a sexist by the people that I encourage in their life and in their career? Do I show that I'm not an ableist. I learned that word at the disabilities conference I was at. As I treat people with disabilities the same way that I treat people without. Can you see that in my life? Can you see that in your life? Does what is going on in my heart oh, happen in the world around me? We're getting ready to eat at the banquet table that the Lord has set for us. My question for you is, who are you willing to have at that table? I don't want, I don't want the Jesus answer. I want to know who you're willing to have at this table. Because all we require to come to this table is the love of Jesus Christ. Are you able to have somebody who's a different color skin than yours to eat at this table with you? Are you willing to have somebody who might not agree with you on theological issues around those hard conversations that we have about abortion, about homosexuality, uh, about the role of women, uh, about the way we deal with hunger or the way we deal with poverty or the way we deal with those who are poor of spirit? Are you willing to have people who don't look, think, act, or sound anything like you, but because they love Jesus, there's a place for them at this table. That, my friends, is true humility. That is asking the least of these into our midst. Not caring about what anybody else thinks. And to be open to the blessings that Jesus wants to lay upon us. 
children of God, the table of the Lord is before you. Who are you willing to invite? Pray with me, please. Gracious God, we come to you calling for forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, because we get so caught up in ourselves that we miss the opportunities to minister to those whom you give us. Help us, Lord, to be able to stand firm in what we believe as we are able to embrace those who are different. Help us, Lord, to be able to welcome all to the table and not just those with whom we are comfortable. Lord, I thank you for the incredible, incredible response that this community has given to our beloved pastor and his family. Now help us, Lord, to give that same response to somebody who is an outcast, someone who the world does not love, someone who needs your grace. Gracious God, we realize we are not worthy to come to this table, but we come because you set it for us. And in the grace we receive from you as our sin-stained clothes are made clean, may you give us that grace that in your name we may share it with others. So that someday we may be a family filled with love and all the differences that you've created in this world. Gracious God, send your spirit upon us and in the mystery of this meal, feed our souls. Amen. Amen. This time I invite the elders who are serving to come forward. So we come to this table to do three things. Do you remember what they were? We come to Remember, we come to experience. experience and we come to oh. hope. And we do all those things knowing that we are not worthy, amazed by the grace with which, within which we live, and overwhelmed by the call to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord so God may be praised. Amen. Jesus Christ, the night that he was betrayed, he took some bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, take and eat for this is my body that has been broken for you. Blesses the new covenant of the blood of Christ. Take and drink. Gracious God, we come to this table. May we truly feel touched by your spirit. May we truly be humbled, not crushed by the world, but being willing to serve her in your name gracious God we come to this place filled with 
all kinds of feelings and emotions. We cry out in pain for those we love. And we sing and rejoice in celebration for the blessings that we receive. And we live in that strange place where those two things collide. But we come, Lord, to the only place we know, to your feet. Humble us and bless us in the name of your glorious Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Is our God a God that keeps promises? And his promise is, I will never leave you or forsake you. And there is nothing, nothing, nothing you can do, even if you sit in the wrong seat, that will separate me from your love. That is our good news. Let's stand and sing a praise together. Go as crushed people for Jesus. Who 
cares what the world thinks. But someday I'm going to stand before the Lord and I would much rather hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, than have him say, why did you not do this for the least of these? So go from this place in the humility that comes with being a child of God. Go from this place in the grace that is promised you every moment of every day through the love of Jesus Christ. And go from this place in the fellowship and the great power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Have a good day. God bless you.